everyone. Thanks for watching Around the Peninsula. I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and I'm at Green Hills Memorial Park in Rancho Palos Verdes, standing next to the moving Vietnam Memorial Wall that returned to Green Hills during Memorial Day weekend. Here at Green Hills, every year for decades, they've had special observances to remember all those that served and paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. So now we're going to look at what they did here to remember our veterans. We're going to hear their stories of Memorial Day weekend 2021. My name's Tom Lasser. I'm a retired soldier, a Vietnam veteran with Oak Leaf Cluster, Army helicopter pilot by trade, shot down once, wounded twice, and tinkled in my flight suit a couple dozen times. <laughs> I, uh, we're here on, to, to honor Memorial Day, and we're here to honor that wall over there. Uh, it, I, I think back to my uh, time in Vietnam, my first tour, uh, in, um, May of 1967, we had flown all day, the usual stuff, got back late, uh, put the aircraft to bed, turned it over to the night maintenance crew, walked over to the mess hall, and while we're eating, the uh, regimental chaplain and the battalion executive officer came in, and we had a short Memorial Day service. And we all looked around, today's Memorial Day? Who, who knew? You, you, you just don't look at the calendar that way uh, when you're in combat. And you don't get any days off in combat, so that was what I was used to as Memorial Day. Well, they made some comments, uh, and I don't remember what they said. But the Sergeant Major butted in, as Sergeant Majors do, and he said, now listen here, it's not a holiday, it's a day of remembrance. That was quite the eye-opener. He also said, thank you, thank you, thank the Sergeant Major, and the great Sergeant Major in the sky if he's listening too. Um, and it makes you stop and think, uh, uh, he made another comment. He said, what's with Happy Memorial Day? What's so happy about Memorial Day? So I remember that impromptu statement more than anything the, uh, the chaplain and the XO said. Hey, before I forget, I want to thank some people because if I don't do this now, I'm going to forget. My wife's going to be really angry. I want to thank Green Hills Memorial for this great event and this spectacular site. And I want to thank Jennifer, Ray, and the whole crew. Let's give them a big hand. I know they've modified the program because they usually have a spectacular event on Memorial Day itself with thousands of people, probably the largest one in LA County. Uh, right, Chaplain? Uh, probably. And um, uh, couldn't pick a better place. 120 acre oasis right here in Los Angeles County. Also, uh, the Traveling Wall, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund for bringing this out. The only organization I know that brings it to you to honor the fallen. Uh, let's give a hand to those folks that uh, brought that out here. The uh, Color Guard and uh, the Marine Corps Junior ROTC out of Redondo Union High School. Great Americans doing great things. The Junior ROTC is one of the best kept secrets in the United States. And Chapter 53, the South Bay Veterans of America chapter that I happen to be a member of, uh, another group of great Americans uh, who assembled this wall here and provided security for it. Besides uh, the uh, color guard, they also uh, provide uh, scholarships, uh, do civic outreach. And if you drive up down Pacific Coast Highway, you'll see the signs out there that say Vietnam Veterans Memorial uh, Highway. That's them. Let's give them a big hand also. The 146th Air Wing Band, aren't they good? Especially when they break up on the little combos. I knew uh, one of the commanders of the 146, and he told me once, why be number one when you can be 146? <laughs> How about that? Um, the, uh, uh, I want to thank the Tiger Squadron, but COVID got them. And uh, I, we might have had stealthy skydivers, but I didn't see them at all. But uh, let's give everybody a hand and give yourself a hand for being here uh, tonight. 
I'm Jennifer Olvera with Green Hills Memorial Park and I'm the manager of community engagement and safety. And this year for 2021, uh, we brought back the Vietnam Memorial Moving Wall, which is our fifth time hosting it and to go along with our 35th uh, Memorial Day observance. Unfortunately, due to COVID last year, we had to cancel everything, including the wall, but we were able to bring it back for this year. So for the community all week and long with the fact that we had to change things up this year, uh, it was only about two and a half months ago that we really thought like, what can we do to give something back to the community for having a year away from everything? And you know, this event is so important to Green Hills, but again, to our community and it was, heart-wrenching for us not to be able to host it in 2020. So for the weekend, we've had just the Vietnam Memorial Moving Wall here on display. And again, it's been, uh, it's the fifth time that we've hosted it. And we also roamed the 120 acre cemetery yesterday with uh, volunteers who are staff, family and friends of the 120 acre cemetery to place flags on the sites of all those markers that are identified as a, v uh, as a veteran. We did make it more of a private event this year, again, because of social gathering limitations. So up at the event site, we will have the city of Rancho Palos Verdes representatives as well as members from the uh, Vietnam Veterans Chapter 53. They will be our special VIP guests up here. But however, the entire park will still be open to the public where they are able to go and enjoy the event from the site of their loved one. And it will be live streamed, so they'll still be able to see everything that may be taking place up at the event site on their phone. And we are still having a keynote speaker, and it's uh, Lieutenant Colonel Tom Lasser, United States Army retired. He actually served two tours in Vietnam and did over, I think it was a thousand flights in Vietnam as a helicopter pilot. Um, so he will be our keynote speaker. We will have a benediction. Uh, our mayor of City Rancho Palos Verdes will be providing the pledge and we'll be having a patriotic concert by the Air National Guard Band of the West, followed by a conclusion with a fireworks demonstration. My message is just one of uh, well uh, solace in terms of the, the the significance, of course, of Memorial Day weekend as we think about those who sacrificed their their lives, but also one of uh, community and coming together. and And this is really quite a neat event that Green Hills is hosting here. We're going to see some fireworks this evening, of course, along with um, some recognition of those who've uh, served and, and sacrificed. And uh, that's quite special. It's been some time since we've all been together. So um, really just people seeing one another, you can kind of see how excited people are to be out and about and, and together again. Yes, uh, such an honor to lead the pledge this evening. Uh, we really do appreciate Green, Green Hills and their willingness to, to put this on and the fact that it came together so quickly. And doing the pledge is gonna be neat. I'm gonna bring my family up there with me, some of my young kids who have been practicingly, practicing diligently and are prepared to to accompany me in the pledge this evening. Please place your right hand on your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Left, right, left, 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 right, left. Right. Well, this is a wonderful um, event, and it's really uh, great that we can get the city out again. Uh, as we're starting to come out of the pandemic, it's really neat to be able to get people out in the community and do something like this and show our respect on this uh, on this holiday, honor, honoring um, those that have given the ultimate sacrifice for our country. It, it's an amazing memorial uh, for those that have never been able to get to the mall in Washington, D.C. and see the full-size one, which I saw relatively soon after it was uh, installed there, which is an incredible uh, moving monument to our, uh, our fallen heroes from Vietnam. Uh, this going around the country gives those that can't get to D.C. the opportunity to see how moving that wall is and how moving this memorial is uh, in its simplicity, uh, honoring those that gave the ultimate sacrifice. It's a real honor to be here at Green Hills today. Um, you know, last year, 2020, was a very tough year for everyone, and it's so it's nice to be out here. Uh, Green Hills was brave enough to have an event today. Um, we've got the memorial wall that's a tribute to our fallen heroes, and um, so that means a lot to me. 
you know, my, both my father, uh, he was in the Navy, and my grandfather was in the Army. And uh, actually, my grandfather was, did some of that trench art. So back in World War I, where they actually took artillery shells and other items and made art out of it. So I'm going to actually give a shout out to my 92-year-old mother. Um, she still lives in El Segundo. She has run a group called El Segundo Cares. And she has for many years been collecting clothes and other items for our vets and bringing them to our vets. And so I will say that I think people sh no matter what age you are, you have an opportunity to give back. And someone like my mom, who's 92 years old, still doing that, and that's her passion. I think that's what we should all strive to do. I was five when I lost my dad in Vietnam, and my sister was two and a half. Um, and we were living on the base here in Fort MacArthur in San Pedro uh, with my mom. And I remember, um, I remember the day, January 8th, 1970, uh, my dad was killed in Vietnam uh, in the Mekong Delta area. He was U.S. Navy. He had been in for six years. This was his second tour of Vietnam. And he um, spoke several different languages. He had went to the linguistic school in Monterey, California. And he was assigned to um, an Army MACV unit to translate for special ops. And his birthday was January 6th, and he had just celebrated his 24th birthday, and he was coming home on January 10th. And so the question was, is was he going to re-up, or was he going to come down and work in the docks here in San Pedro, like his brothers and grandfather in that. And um, he hopped the helicopter on January 8th to go translate. And the helicopter was shot down in the Mekong Delta area, about eight kilometers from Kantao, Vietnam. And so it's a very um, impoverished area in that. Um, I remember when the chaplain and the officer came to tell my mom at the door about my dad. I remember the colored pajamas I have. It's a very vivid memory that I can um, describe in detail. And um, we, in turn, then, you know, um, moved closer to be with my mom's family down in Carson. And uh, my mom purchased a house with the settlement that the government gives um, Gold Star families. And so we have lived in Carson, grown up in Carson. My dad is buried here in Green Hills and we just appreciate the Green Hills Memorial Park because every five years they host the Vietnam Veterans Memorial while that travels and so um, we do go to the wall back in DC but this is like having the wall come to home here is very special and so uh, we raised we we grew up here we've all stayed here my mom still lives in the same house and uh, my sister and I um, live you know very close to her and um, come up here and we've been volunteering here at the wall every day and the object is is you know this is the apex of the wall it's where the wall first begins in uh, you know 1959 and then it travels down on the east panel circles back down to the west panel and then ends at 1975 and so it's it's coming full circle back to the center of it but it's also the v shape that the wall is in kind of reminds you of like our dads reaching out and giving a hug because you as you enter into this wall it's very overwhelming and so if, um, if you think about the 58,000 names plus, that's like filling Dodger Stadium with the names. And you think how crowded Dodger Stadium is, is that's how crowded it is on this wall. So Sons and Daughters in Touch were a national organization of children whose fathers were killed in Vietnam or still remain missing in action. Um, we still have about 1,500 MIA fathers um, who have not come home to their families. And so as a nation, we owe it to the families for the service and sacrifice that their fathers gave um, to bring them back home. We have an award-winning documentary that was done by Estrico Productions back in Arlington, Virginia. And um, we have a nonprofit called Two Sides Project, the number two sides project. Uh, we have Facebook page, but the documentary is about six children from the Vietnam War who are brothers and sisters of the wall who decided that they wanted to go to Vietnam not only to see the crash sites where their dad were, but to learn about the culture, to learn about the people. But we realized that in war, there's two sides. 
And so we knew about our side through Sons and Daughters in Touch, but we didn't know the pain that was felt and the experience that the children in Vietnam had. So we have gone um, in 2016 and that and our documentary premiered in Washington, D.C. and uh, won an award. We're very proud of it. It tells the story of the two sides getting together and um, the anxiety that both sides felt in meeting the other side and not knowing would um, there be grief shared, would it be um, friendly, would there be um, anger in that. And what we found when we got there is we found um, a common pain that bonded us together. We actually describe it as a hole in our soul that hasn't healed. And so through that, the hole may never go away with the pain, but the hole has definitely gotten smaller. So I think to use the cliche, it's a healing journey. Um, I'm not quite sure you actually heal from it, but we walked away, the six of us, and then our two camera crew, um, totally different people. I'm Mike Kennedy, uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran, uh, U.S. Air Force, uh, and it's great to see this wall, the moving wall here, um, so that we can celebrate and honor the people that, not just from Vietnam, but other conflicts that we've lost, uh, defending our freedoms that we cherish so much these days. There are 58,000 plus names on this wall. You are looking for help for one of those names. What can you tell us about that? We are, yes, we are looking for help with one name. Uh, we've kind of uh, unofficially joined a project with the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund in Washington, D.C., trying to put a face with every name that's on the wall. Uh, we started this a couple of years ago. We had 430 names that we had missing photos. We've now gotten that down to one single name from California that we're missing, and, and it's really frustrating us. Uh, there was a, a Navy uh, sailor, uh, Vernon Parr Smith. Uh, he attended high school. He graduated from high school, Manual Arts High School in Southwest Los Angeles, and entered the military, and then he was killed in Vietnam in 1968. And all of our efforts so far have proven fruitless uh, we can't find with we found some family but none of them have photos uh, we found his yearbook from high school unfortunately his name's listed but there's no photo we need that photo so we would love for the information to be able to get out and maybe somebody remembers him uh, that went to school with them or knew him and might have a, a source for us for a photo. So, or if they've got a photo and they want to go directly to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial website, vvmf.org, there's a link to their wall of faces and they could actually upload the photo there directly if they've got one. But anything would help volunteering. And I know some of the names here are people that served and lost their lives right here from our own Palos Verdes community. Can you share anything about that? And, and also just how you find the name on the wall. I'm not really familiar the ones with the ones locally, other than that we do have a book that we can look in that, that has names listed by California, by community, or we can go to the main directory, which looks like a really humongous old style telephone book, and we can look them up and we can find out exactly, the book shows exactly where they are, what panel number they're on, and what line number, and, and then we can go to the wall and show people where they're at. Um, it, the wall also has symbols, a diamond symbol next to most of the names, which are ones that are confirmed as killed. Um, and then there's another symbol, looks like a plus symbol next to some names, and those are ones that are still listed as missing in action and have not been recovered. I want to start off, Ronnie, by thanking you for serving. You have a purple heart. Yes. How, how, tell us about that. Uh, one of the, I would say, probably the, the, the finest gift I've ever had outside of having my family. Uh, because uh, I was due to go home after the first major battles of the Vietnam War and in tall grass, came off a helicopter. I was going home in about 10 days and uh, carrying my, my gear and the grass what's called uh, tall grass uh, is about the height of my knee or taller than that and uh, everyone was walking down a hill with that grass carrying our gear to set up and all of a sudden I see the man in front of me falling to the left and uh, I was thinking to myself uh, what's he falling down on the left for and all of a sudden no, no sooner did I say that to myself I'm falling to the right 
And what happened was this punji stick, a spear that's put in backwards with a razor sharp point, and they dip it usually in some kind of poison or something like that. It, they put it deeply into the ground, and it's so it's so hidden by the grass you never see it. And so two for one is a is an unusual situation because it first went through that first man's leg and came out and straightened out just in time for me to walk into it. Okay. Now the reason I bring that up is because it was a first time that's ever happened in our division. It was the first air cavalry division, and. Um, we were met, us two were medevaced out and taken care of, and I came back in a week. And my commanding officer, who was portrayed by Mel Gibson in the movie We Were Soldiers, uh, saw me after five days. Gary, you're back out here. Uh, is that you? And I said, Yes, it is, sir. And I uh, said, Get over here. And uh, so we saluted each other, Gary Owen, sir. And I was not going to make any waves because I was going home in ten days. Okay. And he said, Gary, is it true what I heard about you? And I said, uh, Well, sir, if you heard it, it must be true. And he, he said, you walked into a punji stick, guy? And I said, yes, sir, I did. And then he comes up to me and he says, you walked into the same punji stick as the man in front of you just got through walking into, uh, guy? I said, yes, sir, that's correct. Okay, not going to argue, okay. And he says, do you have any idea, guy, how, just how much the two of you, two for one, are the biggest joke of the entire 1st Air Cavalry Division. He said, two clerks, one, one punchy stick. You are a first. And that is the double very trouble, double sure. trouble, two for one special, right? And that was my kickoff for coming home. And then they mailed me uh, the, the, uh, the Purple Heart in the mail, and I had it. Now, I speak to students in school about my living history, and I always bring that with me. Okay, and I give it to the students that I'm talking to in the classroom uh, to let them know, hold it in the palm of your hand and they can separate it. Go all throughout the classroom and hold it because, because now you'll be able to see and tell the students, I've actually held a purple heart in the palm of my hand and it's for being wounded or killed in action and it's a big deal. Hey, my name is Chaplain Dove Cohen and I'm here today to deliver the benediction and to introduce some very special guests. Two of them have earned the Medal of Honor and um, the Purple Heart. And uh, one of them is the Chief of Chaplains of the Coast Guard Chaplaincy on the Western Reserve. The message is that, that we need to do more than we're doing. And that even though we remember what people have contributed to us by their service and, and by their sacrifice, there's so much more we have yet to do. Fourteen months ago, uh, Chaplain Jeff Montanari, who is also here today, and I'll be introducing him later. He's the chief of Coast Guard chaplains. And uh, he had an idea that somebody needed to do something for those that were food insecure. Uh, there were so many people, uh, especially the, those who were seniors that couldn't get out to the market, that were fearful that they might contract the COVID and then die. So they stayed home, they isolated, and many of them were really starving. They were food insecure in the truest sense of the words. So we started delivering food to 10 veteran homes, and that was in March of 2020. Come one year to the end of February this year, and we went over 250,000 meals. Every month now we're doing at least 50,000. And we just put together a program with the VA, starting in West Los Angeles, that every inpatient being discharged from medical treatment and every outpatient is offered our program at no charge, 21 meals a week delivered to their front door. But you can either go to food to life, F O O D T O L I F E dot org, or call the number. 949-215-9995. Also, we were just named in February an affiliate of Meals on Wheels. So if you go to the Meals on Wheels website and you put in the county where you live, we now serve six Southern California counties, you'll find the Kevin Dobson Memorial Food to Life Program. These are for veterans, seniors, and food insecure medically challenged, whatever the reason, we don't ask about their finances. Um, but our, our dear friend, Kevin Dobson, who was a veteran from Vietnam, um, died suddenly in September of 2020. And we asked his family's permission to rename our program in his memory. Some people 
come here because they want to honor the memory of those who lost their lives. For me, it's, it's much more personal because I grew up across the street from the Murphy family. I'm Jewish, and I would go to their house for Easter and Christmas, and they would come to my house for Hanukkah and Passover. And up here on the board, you have the name, where did we go, it's right here. It's right here, Edward James Murphy, Jr. So he went into the service four years before I did. Uh, his younger brother, Jim, went in when I did. He didn't come back. Um, and I served as a chaplain in Europe never shot at, never in the danger that they were, and he went to serve his country and paid the ultimate sacrifice. An honor to be joined by a Vietnam veteran's grandson and great-granddaughter Lily and your family. You are here to honor your grandfather. Tell us a little bit about your grandfather's story. Uh, my grandfather was a CWO officer and uh, he was a pilot for the Army um, and he, he he served uh, in the Army for a while before. He was 26 years old, and on that day, he uh, had a plane crash um, in 1968. So it's in the, the larger section of the wall here, as you can see, the where a lot of people were dying at, uh, a lot. So uh, it's I come out every time I see a traveling wall or anytime I'm in D.C. or any kind of Vietnam thing, I come to honor him um, and just uh, memorial him and then think about what life could be uh, without him and just be thankful for what he did give to the country and to us. I, I have a little a little tiny soldier on my uh, dresser, a uh, little silver soldier that I, just as a memory, um, especially on Memorial Day, just remembering the, the ones that didn't come home, the, the ones that gave that sacrifice. Being a daughter of a veteran, what does that mean to you? Being a daughter of a Vietnam veteran is everything to me. He's my, whew, my hero. I do what I do because of him. And, you know, my father and I uh, share a lot of common interest. We like to give back to the community. We like to do good for those that we can. And um, a lot of my heart is because of my father and I'm blessed and grateful because my father did come home. I was born after he came back and if he didn't I wouldn't exist so he's not that's not the only reason why he's my hero he's just a hero in general because of the human being that he is but being able to give back to our community being able to be a part of this with the Vietnam veterans of chapter 53 to be honored by them and for them to treat me like I'm family that's that's everything and to be able to sit quietly and hear their stories, stories that they usually only share with each other and to be able to be included in that. There's nothing else like it. Standing next to this wall is always so emotional and a reminder that every day we need to be grateful for the men and women that serve our country for our freedom. And that'll do it for this edition of Around the Peninsula. Thanks for watching.